In this video, we are just going to talk about uh, shifting equilibria or Chatterer's principle. So, if you ever wondered what would happen to a reaction where we have reactant, let's say A and B, the reaction at equilibrium, and then we decide to do some changes. Let's say we decide to increase the concentration of uh, our reactants, okay, A and B. What happens if we decide to increase the concentration of any of the two? Or what would happen if we decide to increase the concentration of the products? So what is our concentration? We increase the concentration. So what is the effect? What if we decide to reduce the concentration? Or what if we decide to increase the pressure of these gases? Assuming these reactants are gases, or even the products as gases. What happens if we decide to increase the pressure? What happens? If we decide to increase the temperature what happens if we decide to increase the volume or what would happen if we decide to reduce the pressure or reduce the temperature or reduce the volume so all these have got different effects the temperature increasing the temperature basically doesn't have a single effect it depends on the kind of a reaction is it an exothermic reaction an endothermic reaction so all these changes basically refers to Richard's principle. Richard's principle basically summarizes what happens to a reaction at chemical equilibrium when these changes are done. So it's going to be a shift in equilibrium to just overcome the stress. So that is what Richard's principle is all about. So we can summarize it to say according to Richard's principle, a system that is at equilibrium when exposed or subjected to a disturbance or we can say a stress is going to shift in a way that is going to we can use the word counter or overcome the disturbance or relieve the stress okay and re-establish the equilibrium so it always wants to go back to equilibrium okay so that is what is very important so we need to understand the effects of all these things that I mentioned increase in concentration of either the reactants or the products decrease or increase in volume, decrease or increase in temperature for the different kinds of reactions that we would have. Okay, so we now know what Chatterer's principle is all about. So let's get to work and then see what what's the summary. Okay. So now what happens if we get to increase the concentration of let's say A or both? So increasing the concentration of A basically would going to favor the forward reaction. Okay, why? Because we're going to have more reactants. And of course, if you go back to your kinetics, you're very much aware that an increase in concentration leads to an increase in the rate of a reaction. Now, in this case, where we have both the forward and the backward reaction, increasing the concentration of A would imply that we've increased the concentration of the reactants forward for the forward reaction. So, whenever you increase the concentration, so if you increase the concentration of what is on the left, it will go towards the right. If you increase the concentration of what is on the left, it will go towards what? The left. That is the way it works. Okay. Now, the basic idea is you know that your K, or let's say your KC, in case of concentration, is basically dependent on your products, which are C, the concentration of C, concentration of D, divided by the concentration of A, divided by the concentration of B. Of course, these are supposed to be raised to where stoichiometric powers. In this case, let's assume they all just have ones as coefficients. Excuse me. Okay. So what happens? Let's consider the case where we've increased the concentration of A. We increase the concentration of A. What happens? So if we increase the concentration of A, since the reaction is no longer going to be at equilibrium because we've altered or done something to the equilibrium we've added we've changed the concentration so it will no longer be at equilibrium so our calculation will be referred to as what q now what what is the meaning of that if we increase the concentration of a now the fact that a is on the bottom as a reactant if we increase it it implies that we are reducing the value of q so in this case it would mean that q is now less than k so we need to make sure again we somehow increase q so that it becomes equal to k because at equilibrium, Q is equal to K. Q is just a quotient when you are not at equilibrium. And then K is at equilibrium. 
So knowing that Q is less than K, what are you supposed to happen? So to make sure things become ordered, what is going to happen is after we've increased the concentration of A, which is on the bottom, and then it has reduced the value of Q, it's going to favor a forward reaction. And what happens if we favor a forward reaction? It would imply that our reactants now our products, sorry, are now going to be increased, which is going to lead to an increase in the value of Q and eventually Q will be equal to K, and then the reaction will go back to equilibrium. So that's the basic idea. Now what happens in a case where we decide to do the opposite, where we decide to reduce the value of uh, the reactants, let's say A itself. So if we reduce the concentration of A, it would mean that we're increasing the value of Q, meaning that this time around Q is going to be greater than K. So we need to reduce Q, and how are we going to reduce Q? We reduce Q by favoring the backward reaction. So since we've reduced the concentration of A, it means that we need more of A. So it's going to now favor what? The, the backward reaction. And that would increase now the concentration of A so that we can now reduce the value of Q. Okay, so that is basic mathematics and that's basically what happens and that is the effect of the concentrations. So just know that if you increase something on one end, it is going to go the other side. If you reduce something on one end, that is where it is going to go. So we've said in a case where you decide to reduce A, the reaction will make sure that we produce more of A. If we decide to increase A, the reaction will need to produce more of the products. So that is what the Chatterer's principle summarizes. So we've talked about the concentration. What about the effect of uh, volume and pressure? So we do know that when you're talking about gases, equivalent number of moles of gases at the same temperature and pressure occupy the same what? Occupy the same volume. What it implies is whether you have a more of let's say oxygen and also a more of let's say hydrogen gas, these are going to occupy the same volume. Okay? And of course, uh, the value of your not mistaken at room temperature and pressure should be something like uh, 24 decimeter cubed. Yeah, so that's what we, we know. So what, what does that mean? So what it means is if we decide to, let's say, let's put it to that side, so that we have three moles of our reactants, of our, of our products, and then this side we have two moles of our reactants because a single mole there and a single mole. Okay. Now what happens if we decide to increase the volume of our system where this, re this reaction is occurring, if we decide to increase the volume? What happens? So if we increase the volume, what it means is that we have more room now. More room for what? More room for the gases. Now in this case, which side needs more volume? So if you check this side, where we have got three moles, this one needs a higher what? A higher volume. Where we have two moles, it needs less volume. Okay. So if you increase the volume, it implies that you are going to favor what? The forward reaction, so that it's able to occupy and fill more of what? The space. So an increase in volume will favor the side with a greater number of moles. Now, on the other hand, if we decide to reduce the volume, if we decide to reduce the volume, it's going to favor the side where we have what? Where we have less moles. So in this case, it would be the backward reaction. So the number of moles basically helps us to understand that. And this is somewhat related to the next uh, part, which is pressure. Now, what happens if we decide to increase the pressure? Try to think about it. So I'm pretty much sure aware that you guys already know what the relationship between pressure and volume. Not so. We know the relationship between pressure and volume. So these are inverse proportion to each other. And what basically that tells us to say is, if you increase the pressure, it implies that you're reducing what? Reducing the volume. So if you're reducing the volume, it is. It means it's taking us back to what we are from talking about, which would mean that it's still going to favor what? It's still going to favor the side which has got less moles. Okay, so that is the way it works. If you increase the pressure, you reduce the volume, so it will favor less moles. What happens again if you decide to reduce the pressure? If you decide to reduce the pressure, it's going to the volume is going to be higher, and in that case, we're going to favor a side with greater number of moles. So that's the basic, basic concept that you need to understand about pressure and volume. Very, very simple. Just know that the higher the volume, 
it will favor the side with greater number of moles. Okay, let's try to move now and talk about the most interesting of all, according to me, that is temperature. Because temperature depends on the kind of a reaction that you're talking about. Is the reaction endothermic or exothermic? So that explains what is all going to be, what's going to happen. Now, we we'll use the same example of ours. Okay. And then let's say we have C and D. Okay. So now what basically happens in this case? Let's say this is an uh, let's say endothermic reaction. So what is an endothermic reaction? So an endothermic reaction is basically a reaction where we know to say a reaction is going to be gaining what? It's going to be gaining it according to thermodynamics. So gain of it is an endothermic reaction. So in some questions, you may find that they've written to say on the reactant side, they put, let's say, plus 10 joules. That would imply this reaction needs to gain a bit of energy for it to progress. Okay. Now, the opposite is true. When you see energy being added on the other side in joules, it implies that there is loss okay, or production of energy. Okay. So that's what you need to know. In some cases, they may give you what we call a thermochemical equation, where they'll just write the the energy at towards the end and then they'll show a sign let's say plus 10 joules that would imply it's what it's still endothermic now if i put a negative it's exothermic so the sign tells you whether it's exothermic or endothermic of course it may be in kilojoules okay now what happens if we decide to increase the temperature of the reaction that is at chemical equilibrium we decide to increase the temperature and then this is an endothermic reaction so Think of it in the way I've, I've talked about it, where we say in an endothermic reaction, we need to add it as what? As a reactant, because it's somehow being added. Okay. So in an endothermic reaction, we show it as a reactant because it's gained. So if we decide to increase the energy, that would imply that it's somehow more like we are increasing the concentration of the reactant. So in such a case, this is going to favor what? The forward reaction. Okay. And then in a case where you decide to do the opposite, you decide to reduce the the energy being added by being the temperature. If you decide to, to reduce the temperature, what happens if you decide to reduce the temperature? So if you reduce the temperature, the effect is going to be the energy is not going to be enough. So we need to reverse the reaction because we know if the forward reaction is endothermic. It implies that the backward reaction is going to be exothermic. Okay? So, this 10 joules is being added in the forward reaction. It's, being, it's acting as a reactant. Now, in the backward reaction, it's going to be produced. So, if we reduce the energy that is being gained, it would imply that we would need this reaction to favor what the backward reaction so that the energy can be reproduced and be enough for the reaction, of the forward reaction. Okay? So, that's what you need to understand. And of course, this is not very difficult to understand as we even switch on to an exothermic reaction. So if we change to exothermic reaction, that would imply that we need to put the energy on our right hand side so that we think of it as a product of the forward reaction. And in such a case, if you decide to increase the temperature, if you increase the temperature, so equally, it's more like you're increasing the, the product's concentration. So this would favor the backward reaction. And of course, if you decide to reduce it, if we reduce it, what is that? It's more like you're reducing now the product's concentration. So it's going to favor what? The forward reaction. So this is a very, very simple concept that you need to understand under the Chatterer's principle and shifting equilibria. Okay, so check out for the next video where we get to cover the questions, practice questions, practical questions that can help you understand these things and remember them more easily. Okay, so check the link in the description for the video that talks about questions thank you very much for watching and have a blessed day